It's Bill Krakenberger and Rosalie Michaels on the Wisecrack Sports Betting Podcast by WSN.com. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Wisecracks. I'm Rosalie Michaels, and I got my good buddy, Bill Krakenberger. What's up, Crack? Hey, Rosalie. How you doing? Another good show on tap here. Yeah, I know. I know. We just uh, we finished up our interview. We'll get to that a little bit later, but we got a lot of good stuff today. Lots of sports coming back. I was looking at WSN.com and they're talking about all the things that you can start betting on now with, with MLS is coming back. They obviously at the end of the month, we've got more sports coming back. So there's, there's a lot to talk about today and in the coming weeks. Yeah. Stick to WSN.com. There's a lot of uh, great informative articles there and uh, we're going to be starting up here. In the yeah. next uh, two weeks, two weeks away from uh, some some sports. So from let's the uh, mass, keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> from the mass infusion of sports, right? This yeah. is going to be interesting to see how that all plays out. So, but today's episode, it's, we got a great show today, big show today. Um, but before, we're going to do a quick little preview of everything that uh, you can expect from us here today. So up front, we've got our weekly strategy session. It's a crash course. And today we're going to be talking about live betting. You guys have said how much you love these strategy sessions and we do too. Um, now live betting, it's super popular because of all the new legal sports betting apps and crack. You've got some really important tips that you should, that our audience should know if they're already betting on games live, right? Yes. Live betting makes up a big part of these sports books out in Vegas here and across the country now, the new Euro books. So uh, this will be a good show. Some good, uh, I have some good advice for people. Yeah. I'm, I'm really, really excited about learning about more about that. And then after that, Great guest this week. Uh, you know, he's got his own podcast from Action Junkies. Uh, John Orlando, just a really nice guy, local Vegas guy like you, right? And uh, we had a good time talking to him. So we'll look at that a little bit later. And then after we talk to John, Crack's going to drop his knowledge like he usually does with a brand new pick that you can use right away this week, right? Yep. We're going to go to the UFC this week and uh, dabble in something I really don't usually dabble in, but I have a couple guys that are around me that agree on something. So I'm going to give that away later on. Well, and you were on the Action Junkies podcast. So did that inspire your pick this week? Uh, he also likes, he also agrees. Okay. Uh, but, you know what, I, what, what I'm saying. So that's good. Okay, good. We'll talk about that during your pick then. And then, of course, we will wrap things up as we always do with questions from you guys. We love it. We're getting lots of questions. Um, so we're not going to be able to get to all of them today, but we do have a few on tap for you. And uh, so don't forget, though, tweet your questions to us at WSN Sports, at Rosalie Michaels, at Bill Crackman. And we're going to choose our favorites to, choose, uh, to answer for next week's show. And make sure that you use the hashtag wise cracks so we don't miss your question in that big Twitter universe. You can also leave your questions on the, in the YouTube comments and that, and then while you're there and watching our show, make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss all our newest episodes. I actually had somebody ask me on Twitter today, you know, when does it go live? So make sure that you, uh, you subscribe and then that way you don't miss any of it. Right, Crack? Yep, absolutely. Sounds All like right. a plan. That's good. All right, so let's get into our strategy discussion. Live betting. Okay, so live betting, you're basically betting while the game is playing live, right? And then the sports books will set live lines that are changing based on what's happening in the game. This is really cool, very interactive. And of course, you can learn more about it on our uh, at WSN.com. They have their, in their betting guides, they have everything about live betting. So you can read about that. But first, I want to find out from Crack, right, your opinion. Is there good value in live betting? And is it something that people should consider if they want to make smart bets? Personally, I do not do a lot of live betting. I actually plan on getting into it, and I have planned on it even last season, <laughs> Um, especially in the NFL. Um, there's, there's some really uh, – I, I, listen, I know some sharp guys that actually win money, and I know one of the sharpest guys that places a lot of bets live. So 
Um, I know there is some advantages to doing it. I know it's a unique line that comes up. In other words, when I bet a regular game, the line comes up seven days ahead of time in some instances in the NFL and college football, whereas you can bet live and the line has to be instantaneous. It has to come up automatically, which means there could be a couple flaws in that line. <laughs> it's, it's a good area to be able to kind of push the edge in your favor then with live betting, right? Correct. Correct. That's the, however, though, they're, the bookmakers also know that mm -hmm. some of the sports books in this town have said that they have 20 up to 22% of their whole volume is on live betting, especially during an NFL season, during the prime time games, the Monday night, the Sunday night, Monday night, Thursday night game. So, uh, it, when there's it, the, it, the single game going on, it did, are they seeing more when there's a single game going on as opposed to, you know, Sunday? Oh, sure. Sure. Oh yeah. Right? I'm sure that they're seeing the, 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 the volume, the, the, mult, the bulk of the volume is coming in uh, during those primetime games. But they do offer them during the regular daytime, too, 10 in the morning when there's a ton of games going off. They do have – just think about that, what I'm saying. Yeah. So 10 a.m. is the kickoffs out here in Vegas, 1 o'clock on the East Coast time. There's probably six, six games, five, six games going early, sometimes more, sometimes less. But on average, six games. Well, so now – uh, someone who is booking that has to have a live algorithm for each particular game and mm -hmm. have a line for each particular game. It's so hard to man six different live lines. Uh, I know they have some, some sophisticated software, uh, of, of course, but it's not as easy as you may think to handle those kind of lines. But yet at nighttime, when those games are on prime time, they just have one game to book. So, uh, that, that's big opportunities for guys to come in because you're going to get that square base, that uh, mm -hmm. base of customers that really doesn't bet for a living. They're just gambling. So they may tend to bet some teams to come back or favorites and overs and maybe a guy like like uh, like me eventually uh, when I get into – I have done live betting, don't get me wrong. But, yeah. Um, so that's it's an interesting subject. But it's just not the bulk of your 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 uh, your betting right now. Okay, so really interesting, and I, I want to get a little bit more into like the strategy. But first, let's talk about the basics. The basics. If I want to make live bets, inter inter game bet, right? How do I go about doing that? Okay. Well, first let me tell you, because this is the key uh, to know where which sports book you're playing in. And to make sure, because uh, they charge you a little extra vigorous, the juice, the house edge. Okay. Uh, whereas as the start of a game on, on an NFL game is minus 110 on both sides, meaning you're laying a dollar ten to win a dollar, $110 to win $100. Well, with the live betting, they kind of start a little bit wider margins. They'll start maybe with 115 on both sides. So mm -hmm. they have a 50% more house edge than they do on a straight bet. Um, so you have to think about that too. So you're betting into a, a wider margin. So make sure you know which sports book is which and check your margins because they all charge, they all start at a different rate. Listen, I line shopping playing, again, right? Line shopping again. Exactly. Yep. We're going back okay. to that. Uh, the live line shopping, uh, you'll go from a place, especially on the East coast There's a lot of the, the Euro books are really into this more actually than the American books. They're just ca getting caught up with this. So, um, okay. You know, uh, I see a lot of them are, are, are minus $1.15 they start at, but yet I noticed that some of them are minus $1.20 both ways. And mm -hmm. I even seen one have the, I'll say it, the nerve, the price gouging to start at <laughs> minus 125 each way. Very hard to beat that. Very hard to overcome that. Yeah. Oh, wow. You know, it's like when there's a pandemic going on and everybody's jacking up the price of hand sanitizer, right? Same kind of thing. Very similar, very similar. But let's go back to your original question the about the live wagering. Okay. And, you know, uh, it, it has its own separate – usually it has its own separate box. You know, you don't go in under the NFL or you'll, 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 it'll be like its own live wagering. Or you could go under NFL and it's the first line uh, option choice is live wagering. So you can keep that line up there too. This way it, it, it goes back and forth. You'll see the line move and um, – you can so so you, you're going to bet on the sides or the totals, and let's use the NFL since that's the most popular live wagering event. 
Um, okay. For us Americans right now, maybe soccer is over in over in Europe, but for here uh, in the United States, NFL game, let's use a primetime game and let's go back to the same game, Dallas Cowboys versus the, the Arizona, Arizona Cardinals. Arizona Cardinals. Keep picking yeah, up people let's, against let's, each other. <laughs> let's use that because that's a real game that happens every year. So yep. we'll use that. And sometimes that is a primetime game. Um, yep. So they're going to come up with a line based on – where the game is, how far the game is into the game, uh, or or it's normally based on the opening line, like the first quarter. If there's not a lot going on, the, the line was minus seven and fifty. The total, the total of the both teams going over under points, it'll kind of be the same when the first live line comes up. Depending on who has the ball, it may go to six and a half. If Dallas has the ball, and maybe they have a, a first down on the twenty-five yard on their own twenty-five, the next play they gain fifteen yards. Well, now they're on the 40, almost midfield. You'll see Dallas will go from minus seven to minus seven and a half. And maybe the total will even be skewed on the over minus uh, 50 and a half over uh, minus 120 or 130 instead of the 110. So mm -hmm. you'll see that line move throughout the game. And when it does move, you have opportunities to bet either side of the game. And just think of this, though. This is really maybe even a, uh, a more of a strat strategic way and I'd like to know maybe if the pro betters, but they're not going to really tell you, the guys that bet for a living out there, they might not even like me saying this. You want to kind of put yourself in Joe Public's shoes, okay? Dallas has the ball, midfield, first drive of the game. Well, automatically, Joe Public looks at it and says, oh, my God, Dallas is driving already. Oh, they're great. Oh, my God, they're going to be – they're going to score. They're going to do good. They're going to do good. So, automatically, they want to jump on Dallas bandwagon. So mm. now you're going to see minus seven and a half and minus eight. Well, meanwhile, a lot of things can happen on that drive. It could be mm -hmm. a turnover. They, just, they could just go four and out, you know, yeah. three and out. So, or better yet, maybe they'll just score a field goal. or Maybe they'll miss a field goal. Maybe they won't score at all. There's so many different things that can happen. But yet, Joe Public, they just see that, that, that Dallas that Cowboys mean, driving. Right? They're the favorites. They're driving. So maybe the underdog might be the more value play on that type of a bet. Got it. Got it. So, okay. So that's still a little more strategy. Okay. So we taught, we've talked about before, like line shopping and in the apps and being able to go into the other apps. So you're doing the same thing. Like if you're looking at live bets, you're doing the same thing. You're looking at these different apps and seeing who has the best line, watching them move during the live game, just as you would leading up to the beginning of the game. Right. Yep. Um, but there, so that's if you're betting the the point spread. And, but there's other props throughout the games as well, right? Well, actually, this just started. I noticed in the last year or so, I've seen some shops have halftime props. Well, they'll actually put up a prop on a player. Let's say, let's use Tom Brady over on their yards for the game. Well, they'll actually based on the score, and maybe the game, maybe the Patriots are, are a seven point favorite in their. Well, now it's going to, going to be Tampa Bay. Maybe Tampa Bay is a favorite before the game by seven, and they are going to be uh, tied up or even behind the game by three points, uh, not leading the game. They're behind by three. So now they know Brady's going to be throwing a lot more. They know he's going to be more aggressive. Mm -hmm. They'll put up a prop. I've seen this uh, over under yardage or over, over under completions or first down for play. They just started doing this. Only a couple of the sports books, but I have noticed it. But that's the only really live – kind of wagering it's usually at the halftime and um you know before i forget very important too uh this is probably the most important thing about live wagering and i i this this is i can't stress this enough uh bill krakenberger will not bet during the game itself only during commercials let ah. me just tell you let me tell you why most yeah. people don't know this uh, i've talked about this on many platforms though so if, if they listen to me they know it uh when you're betting a lot, when you're betting a live game and you're watching your TV at home, or be it, I'll be in, you could be in the sports book watching the game. You're on about a seven second delay yeah. uh, compared to the actual game, sometimes a 10 second delay. So now you have a sports book that has a seven to 10 second delay on you, and they have a, a better grasp, a better grip on that live line Got than it. what you're seeing. Uh, during a commercial, however, we ha during a commercial we have about a minute or so, uh, sometimes more to you know put a bet in. Where let's just face it, I, I hate to be so, so such a cynic, but now we're on level playing ground with the sports book because 
I, I'm not saying that any cheating going is going on, but I know for a fact in the past in this town in Las Vegas, 100 percent, I got to put it in a street term. There was cheating going on. Yeah. The sports sports books have they edge on you? They they were denying your wager. One of the, this is one of the books, by the way, denying yeah. your wager because they had that seven to ten second delay. If you had a slight edge and taking the bet, uh, if you didn't have that slight edge. So um, again, I, wait, I, I don't I don't really wait trust. A You're yeah. trying to tell me that that the casinos have the edge? What? <laughs> yeah, but this yeah. is an edge that's that. This is an edge that's uh, you know, it's it's this is this is an edge that really isn't fair to us. Yeah, betters. There, there, now, now, I'm not saying it goes on a lot, but, you know, there is still software in this town that has a delay also. So now, mm -hmm. not only do you have a 7 to 10 second delay, if you're betting on a place like William Hill, where you're going to put a live line in, now they put you in a spin cycle, and they also have an additional delay. Now you have to overcome two different delays, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm not sure I trust that. I'm sorry. I'm not saying – listen, I, I, I'm not – I'm not saying it's the truth or not the truth, but uh, you know that's my East Coast ways. I'm a, I, and I, I just don't, I just don't trust uh, that someone that's working behind a sports book that has an edge on you is going to give you the fair shake. Yeah. So that's that's your professional opinion on that. Being somebody that has bet numerous times through de numerous different uh, books and things like that. So. Um, so yeah, so it's, it, it is intriguing though. So you said something just before about how there's an additional delay. I wanna talk about, do you just know that because of your experience or how can a player who's not quite as experienced as you understand how much of a delay or how much of an edge that book has on them? Well, it's, it's, it's a good question. And I usually never go into this part of it, but I will, since you asked. <laughs> so I'll even call an AM radio feed delay. If you had a live transistor, mm -hmm. little transistor radio like we used to have when we were kids, uh, you'll see the, the, the feed on the AM radio delay uh, compared to the live sportsbook or TV delay mm -hmm. is, is much different. If you have someone at the stadium that's live at the stadium on the phone with you and ask them what's going on, Compared to what's going on in front of you on the TV, it's going to be two different things. Yeah. So, um, and listen, I, I, I kind of feel bad there. I don't, I don't want to say that the sports books are cheating. I, I don't want to really say that because I, I really don't want to believe that. But all I'm saying is certain employees, they, I, I know the one I'm talking about that it happened. He thought part of his job was to deny these type of wagers when – you know, you put something in and he, they have, he has the delay on you. And that's, mm. it, it was so wrong. Um, you know, it, it just, it, it can happen. And like I said, a, a place like William Hill, they have that big delay already with the AM radio feed. Now they're also delaying with the, the, uh, the spin cycle they put you in. I, I, I just would rather bet a live book like Circa or one of these books that are having live wagering lines, Westgate, South Point, um, that 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 would be my my better choice for a live wagering with the software that kind of goes through automatically and and uh, I just feel like I'm getting a better a fairer shake. Gotcha. So when you say spin cycle, just to to wrap this part of it up, um, when you say spin cycle, what does that mean? It's very good. See, I, I'm always thinking everyone knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> a spin cycle means when you go to click on your wager, you could you could see the little there's a little round arrow going. Tick, 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 mm -hmm. tick, 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 tick. And it's what it is, is actually showing the, the sports book traders your bet and they have an option to deny it or accept it. Mm. And some of the sports books, most of the sports books, I mean, as a matter of fact, all of the sports books in town, uh, they take your bet automatically. If you're okay. betting pregame, it goes right through where if you're betting with William Hill, they, you're on a delay. Okay, so that's a real easy way to know if you are on a delay is if it doesn't accept it automatically, it's it, it's going into the spin cycle, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so moving on from that. So let's talk a little bit about, I mean, we've talked a lot about the NFL with these types of bets. What are the best kinds of bets to make live? And are there any important indicators like the, the amount of juice that people should be watching out for? Um, well, you know, um, I, I kind of went over the juice and stuff. Uh, yeah. I'll just tell you the best sports 
to bet live yeah. is probably uh, NFL. Um, <laughs> that's the most popular, too. So I think a lot of square money is in that market. But, you know, baseball has been trying to reinvent itself. Let's face it. Baseball um, has, has always tried to – they're always playing catch-up with the NBA and especially the NFL. So they also have live wagers. And that's the same thing in between commercials. You can bet live. I think that's, the great, that's a great thing to do. That's okay. fine. Um, but, however, I think the NFL is the more popular thing. But like I said, baseball – now, that, we're getting baseball first. So I'm interested to mm-hmm. find out. I like to keep a lot of the apps open too, by the way. So I'll, I won't just have my, my Westgate app open. I'll have Circa open. I'll have, uh, you know, all, all my different app applications that are sports betting based open. And I'll have the live line at each particular shop for maybe the, the line I'm looking at doing going back. That's reverting back to the old line shopping method. So, yeah. um, but I'm looking forward to see what, what goes on with the baseball. Same thing though there. You have to make sure that you're getting the finding the lowest line because baseball involves a money line. So you just okay. shop and see which which is your best uh, your best lines, starting lines, and as they rise, uh, just the the comebacks on the on the dogs. Uh, if you're going to bet dogs, you want to find out what the best what the best prices are. Well, it's it's interesting this live betting part of uh, sports wagering for me because it can make these sports like baseball that have been kind of losing steam, right? Comparatively to the NFL. Like if, if people are placing these live bets, not only on the, the points, not only on the totals, right? Uh, but also with the prop bets, if you can choose who's gonna hit the next home run, that sort of thing, right? If it's gonna make people watch the games, it's going yes. to make it more yes. relevant. There was a company years ago here before there was even uh, like the first app, there was a company here that was involved in a pitch by pitch live wagering. They were out by out and, and uh, it, it, the company, I don't know if the company failed. I think they just got beat on a lot of things too. Um, <laughs> like people don't know this on a, let's say a three, two pitch, three yeah. balls, two strikes on a batter. What's the most common thing that can happen that will happen? Well, it's a foul ball. Yeah. The, pitch, the, the batter is going to be the up plate. there. They're going yeah. to be very, very protecting the plate. Exactly yep. right, Rosalie. Great yep. point. Protecting the plate. They're going to be swinging more often. A lot yep. of times they won't get the perfect. They won't get the perfect pitch, but they're, they're maybe afraid it's going to be a strike. They'll swing at it, foul, tip it off, or foul. You know. So they 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 did have this in town at one time, but that has since stopped. So uh, that's it's 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 interesting the different things that goes along with this uh, live wagering. And listen. I know it's a giant thing. People love to do it. I talk about it on other platforms with, people, with, my, with the host of the shows that interview me. They love live wagering. So it is the future. It hasn't taken off here like it, 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 it will be. I think down the line, especially with all these new Euro books coming in, this will be the way, the future way of sports betting. Yeah, well, it is. I, I think especially with the, the younger betters coming in, right, because they like that instantaneous kind of payoff because it is you're not making a bet and then having to wait the week to find out how your bet does. This is instantaneous kind of thing. And I was just reading and found out that that Asia in Asia, 90 percent of the sports betting is in the middle of the game. So is this this is the future of sports betting, right? Yes, uh, over, over uh, overseas for sure. Uh, they love betting, and, and it's that you're right. It is that it's that instantaneous result that they get, um, and and it, it hasn't really taken off here in Las Vegas yet, like like it has in other jurisdictions. Let's 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 use. I'll even use the United States. I am willing to say in New Jersey, I bet you the live wagering is more popular probably than Nevada because that's the Euro books there that. Um, that, that actually are, are represented there in New Jersey. And, uh, but then again, I, I could be wrong because the lines there are, are much worse. They're a much wider, they started a much w- wider margin than, than they do um, here, here in the States. I'm sorry, here in, here in Nevada. Gotcha. So, okay, so I, I love the idea of live wagering, uh, live betting. And obviously with you, the biggest part of your strategy is bankroll management, right? That's number one, you say it all the time. You emphasize how important it is to bet 
2% of your bankroll at a time. But it seems like with live betting, this could get out of hand pretty fast, right? Making you, letting you make lots of bets during every game. So how does that change or does it not change your bankroll management rules? Another great point. Absolutely. This can easily get out of control. You're, you don't even realize how many times you're betting th during each inning, during each uh, commercial on NFL, whatever it may be. And again, you, you have to keep it to your bankroll, the, the 2% we talked about before. I know people don't – listen, if you're betting live, you're, it's so much easier to overly go into your bankroll and bet more than you should. Yeah. So you really want to be careful betting live because it's so much – it's so easy to overbet your bankroll. And then what do you do? You wind up chasing it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's definitely not what you want to do. You don't want to be that come from behind kind of person. So, okay. So the great topic, I really, really love this, but I'm trying to get it right really into um, like a, a real world scenario. So the, looking at like that Patriots and Falcons Super Bowl, right? Live betting. That's a great time to do something like that. If you pay attention to the NFL and you, you know, about the Patriots and the type of team they were a few years ago during that Super Bowl, they were down 28 to three. They were down 28 to three in an early, a late part of the game. So that line, right? If you're watching the live betting line shopping that you're doing, that line was probably a really good opportunity to go, you know what? You never count the Patriots out. Right. You just, you bet on them to, cause you're probably pay, making a small wager again, 2%, but the odds are much higher at third end of the third quarter down by 25, right? You, you could throw the 2% rule out, out the window. Oh, you when can. It comes, no, when it, no, no, no. I'm saying when it came to this Super Bowl, I mean, everyone, when it comes to the Super Bowl in general, the, listen, the adrenaline's running so high, the mm. drinks are pouring, the drinks are flowing. People just overbet. I wish they wouldn't because, they, you know, but they, they do. And that, this, this Super Bowl is a great example of at one time you could get back 16 to 1 on the Patriots in that game. Um, listen. Which is incredible people, for the Patriots because yeah, Patriots yeah. are always, you know, favorites. So Everyone was betting Patriots. The sports books across the country, across the world, lost money on this Super Bowl live wagering uh, part of, the bet, uh, the, part of the, their betting, uh, what they take because – Everyone bet Patriots to come back, and they, you know they they just they just uh, they got their head handed to them. So, but that's a perfect example where they were. Um, and, and to be honest with you, I think I actually bet that game live. I was up on Lake Tahoe, and I think I bet that game live. And I think I actually was on the wrong side of that. I think I actually thought it was a it was great odds when the, when the game was getting closer and closer. They kept on moving the game higher and higher towards the Patriots, and I think I. Not much. Maybe I bet a dime or two. Not nothing big. But I mean, yeah. uh, I, I actually said, "Wow, this is a good opportunity. This is a really good opportunity." Maybe I was betting against the public, so that's what I do. Normally, yeah. I get the money there in the long run. I'm going to get the money, of course. But uh, this particular situation, sports books lost money with the live wagering. Yeah, I bet they did on the last year with uh, KC in the playoffs as well. KC did the same sort of thing, right? So yes. that's how you use. That's how you use live betting to your advantage. Great topic. I know that there's going to be more questions out there, but I think we really kind of got to the meat of it here. We did. And I love it. And of course, again, you can go back to uh, the WSN guide to live betting. And, you know, because they've got a great, great blog there about live betting. And of course, it's a good time to go to the Crack Wins app also, because you, when you download the Crack Wins app, you get it on both Apple or Google Play. You get the full access inside the mind and the world of the Crack Man. Trust me, you want to be there. And you get his weekly picks along with great betting strategies like this live betting and you get tips and insider content as well. So make sure you download that crack wins app to get more live betting information from my man, the crack man. Thank but you. we're moving on to our interview this week. Loved our interview this week. We spoke with him a little bit earlier. His name is John Orlando. He is the co-host of the Action Junkies podcast, and we had a great time with him. Check it out. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with us. I know you're a busy man. 
No, no, that's that's not true at all. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know, when when Crack was on my show last week, he was talking about this show, and he said, you know, it's it's the Beauty and the Beast, and I now I see he's absolutely correct. <laughs> oh yeah, I did tell him that, Rosalie. I said it's more like a it's more like I, a I Beauty mean, and a Beast segment. Today. I tried to not be the Beast today. But <laughs> no, <laughs> that's cool. So John, let let, let me ask you, John. Um, again, uh, like Rosalie said, we appreciate you having you on. John, when did you actually first get into, uh, into, into, into gambling or sports betting or maybe just being, oh, we didn't actually say John's father is Tony Orlando, the famous Tony Orlando. And so did you, by being around your dad at a young age, your dad's like a knock around East Coast guy. So <laughs> did you, uh, you know, kind of get into gambling and stuff because you've seen maybe him getting into it or some of his friends or just so because he was in casinos or what? Yeah, so he himself doesn't gamble. He doesn't drink. He's he's pretty uh, he's pretty square in that department. But he does blame himself for uh, introducing me to gambling. Um, you know, as a young age, obviously, I, he was in Vegas working. You know, back then he worked in Vegas maybe literally twenty six weeks a year, uh, like at the Riviera and the the Hilton, the old, you know Elvis's house, uh, old school. And uh, I can remember being like, man, I was five six years old in the coffee shop at the Riviera playing Keno. That's what started this all. He blames him, and, and it wasn't even like through the Keno runner. Like my dad would just say, here, pick numbers, and he'd give me a dollar if I hit the number. Uh, and and I've been, I was hooked ever since. And then I graduated from that to uh, blackjack at maybe 16, playing at the tables, which is crazy, because when I was 16, I probably looked 12, uh, <laughs> and, and somehow they, they let me play. And then blackjack to roulette, and then and then sports. Yeah, that's wow. that's hilarious. My mom did the same thing, but it was bingo. I used to go to the bingo <laughs> hall with her, and yeah. they they create these monsters, right now. Yeah, for sure. But but we're good monsters. Uh, so I like your hat. Live lucky. Oh, yes. Very very cool. So there's that old saying though, like it's better to be lucky than good. For and I've sure. heard that. <laughs> You've not been so lucky, though, <laughs> <laughs> that uh, you made a bet with Conor McGregor versus yeah. Mayweather, right? And you had some bad payouts that you had to make, right? Yeah, you know, it's it's crazy. I've been a Conor McGregor fan since, like, his first fight in the UFC. I just loved his his energy and his flair. And uh, when, when he fought Mayweather, I was on, uh, on the MMA Junkie podcast, uh, with my buddies George and Goes over there at Mandalay Bay, and um, yeah, we started talking about the fight. It was when they first announced McGregor and Mayweather, and uh, you know they like they don't like making money bets. Those guys they like to make bets that are going to cause uh, you know an embarrassing situation. So somehow, and I don't even know what they were supposed to do if they lost. <laughs> I don't know how I got roped into this one-sided bet, but the bet was if McGregor lost, I would have to walk around Mandalay Bay for 30 minutes in a diaper. And um, as, as we know, he lost. And um, uh, funny, I tweeted on the night that he lost. I said, hey, on Monday morning, I'll be at Mandalay Bay walking around in a diaper paying off my bet. And uh, Mandalay security saw the tweet and they told the MMA junkie guys, yeah, no, no one's walking around here in a diaper. Um, and so the compromise was they made me sit on the set I wasn't allowed to speak and I had to hold a sign that said I was dumb enough to bet on McGregor and now I'm wearing this diaper. They have a three hour show guys. And so I had to sit there for three hours in this, in this diaper holding a sign and they gave me a rattle. Uh, and then when that was over, they said that the, the humiliation wasn't enough because the bet was being embarrassed walking around the casino. So somehow I agreed to ending up on the bridge uh, that, that connects maybe what is it, Luxor to uh, uh, New York, New York, or oh, yeah. whatever's on that corner, you know, Trop, yep. the Trop Bridge, yep. and uh, and I was I was in a diaper, and it ended up uh, being a really great thing. I actually ended up on uh, Colin Cowherd on on the herd. <laughs> you know, they they showed it. It was on the front page of Bleacher Report, so I got a lot of uh, attention. Literally two days later, I'm on a Southwest flight, and a guy taps me and says, "Are you the diaper guy?" So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the That's diaper That's what you want to be known as, the diaper guy. Well, oh in God. Vegas, there's all the street performers and stuff. Did you make a lot of money? People come up and take your picture? Not a dime. Uh, a couple <laughs> tried to pay me to leave. Um, but yeah, there was there was no tip. The tip jar was empty. <laughs> wow. That, that, that's that, that's like the famous, 
you know, and you know, those there's either there's two different famous four corners in Las Vegas for people that don't know. One is the strip and flamingo with the overpasses, and one is the one that John was on, which was <laughs> Tropicana and Las Vegas Boulevard, which connects. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing you're maybe from New York to New York, New York to Excalibur, right? right, which right. Is, that's like so popular that oh. overpass, the amount of people that that passed on, yeah. the, on there. Wow. I'd wow, like to get a petition going where they rename it Diaper Bridge, but I don't know, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's possible. It's Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Anything's possible. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me ask you a question, John. Uh, you know, lately, uh, well, obviously, the UFC came back, one of the first sports to come back, that one of the first betting sports to come back, I should say, um, that's popular. And, you know, uh, there's been a lot of these COVID tests that have come back positive. A lot of these fights get canceled. Do you think going forward that's going to be like the norm uh, for the UFC and and uh, it's got to be really difficult for Dana White and his whole crew to put on these shows. Now I know they're going to this island now, which is, I mean, maybe you could explain it. Cause I actually don't know. Is it is it more secluded the island? Are they more under like a, a bubble like the NBA is trying to do, or or uh, is it just they fly in and you know and they take their test before they come over and they're that's why they're uh, getting canceled. Yeah, so I believe, so the Fight, I, Fight Island is on uh, Abu Dhabi, and I believe the reason they did that was because some of the fighters that are international have trouble coming to the States mm -hmm. to fight right now because of travel restrictions, so oh, okay. this was a good solution for that. Um, it, it seems like they've done a phenomenal job with the program that they've put together in terms of testing. Um, you know, I've, I've got several friends, as you know, that fight. Um, and, and, uh, and we also produce the Schmoes podcast. And so I've, I've been able to really get my head wrapped around how they're doing it. And, and, you know, they're testing multiple times during the week and yeah, you know, some guys are, are coming up positive, but they're able, they're already isolated. So they're able to contain it. And I think that, that if other sports could fall in line and just kind of watch how the UFC is doing it now granted of course like you when you start talking football baseball basketball there's more executives it's a it's a it's a there's more people involved more athletes obviously so i know that's tougher but um i think they're they're doing it the right way so are there uh, with what they're doing are there any upcoming fights from a betting perspective that you're really excited to bet on now I, I know, I know. I'm I'm taking into consideration your uh, your 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 stance here and how lucky. Yeah. You've been. Well, so luckily, Connor's not on on any of these <laughs> cards in July, so I'm pretty safe uh, because you know my my history with Connor, and I'm still a, a huge fan. Is I ended up in the diaper, uh, and when he fought Khabib, um, I ended up. Uh, um, having to eat this, uh, take the one chip challenge. It's like this really spicy chip. I don't know if you've seen this. Um, yeah. it, it is, I hate spicy, like black pepper is my threshold when it comes uh. to spice, okay? Total white boy. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, I had to eat this chip and it was awful. So um, luckily Connor's not fighting, so it makes me more excited about betting because um, I know I, I won't end up in, in diapers or, or jumping out of a plane. I was actually supposed to jump out of an airplane too. I wow. made another bet on the Connor Khabib and I welched on that one. I just, I can't do it. I, I just can't do it. John, Connor is your blind spot. You need yeah. to stop. Yeah, stop for sure, Connor. for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, this weekend there's is a great card. You know, I mean, you've got three title fights, um, you know, all the, the, the champions, you know, you've got Aldo who's fighting, who was the, one of the reigning champions for many years. He's like plus 200 or, or more. Uh, you've got Holloway, same thing. You know, it's a rematch for him. Uh, same thing. He's, he's over two to one. So I, I think there's a lot of exciting uh, bets on this card. And I'm going to go for the dogs for sure. You know, I'm going to bet on uh, Jessica to beat Thug Rose. I'm going to bet on Holloway that, uh, you know, he, he got a late start on the last fight. And, and I think it wasn't until the rounds four and five. It was just too little too late. So I'm hoping he'll make some adjustments. And uh, and Aldo, he's the king. You know, I'm still going to go. You know, if you can take it, get a champ and get those kind of odds, I'll take it. It's a fight. Anything can happen. You know, you make one mistake and, and the fight's over. It's not like boxing. You know, in boxing, you can make a mistake. The fight doesn't end. And UFC, pretty much, if, if you make a mistake in there, you're going to pay for it. Great stuff, John. So let, let me ask you. Dana White was on TMZ uh, st stating that the Maz Masvidal, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, Masvidal, uh, his belt will not 
it won't be on the line when he fights Usman. Uh, but that could be up for grabs in a future fight against someone like your guy, Connor. Uh, do you think that can happen? Yeah, for sure. I think that can happen. You know, um, I think, uh, you know, Dana is in the business of making good fights and giving, giving you the fights that, that the people want to see. And um, I think that can absolutely happen. It's going to be exciting. Great. Oh, cool. So let me, let me, let me further on the, uh, hit on that question. So when that fight comes up, are you automatically betting on McGregor because Don't you're a fan? It. Don't 100%. do it. <laughs> Connor McGregor, I know, right? Uh, Connor, Connor McGregor, to me, uh, you know, I think people forget how good he is. You know, the, 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 the losses that he had, you know. So when he fought Diaz, that was short notice. He's normally a 145er. When he fought Diaz the first time, he took the fight at 170. He wasn't used to carrying the, that kind of a weight you know, in there, if you look at round one, it was an absolute ass kicking, you know, one sided Connor putting it on Diaz. He ran out of gas. He got choked out. He came right back, did the rematch. I think he clearly won that fight three rounds to two. So he, he won that fight. Um, Khabib was probably the worst matchup he could possibly have. Everyone knows his ground game is probably not the strongest. Um, and when he fought Khabib, it was after a very long layoff. He still won a round, which I know that sounds crazy like to, to even, you know, brag about that, but no one had ever done it against Khabib. Um, he did get taken down and got back up. No one really does that against Khabib. So I, I still think, um, you know, people have forgotten how good Connor is, and I think his fight IQ is unparalleled, and uh, I think he'll be the champ again. So clearly the UFC MMA is, is your jam. That's Yeah, that's for sure. Cool. So, but Crack, he talks about how we know Conor McGregor is your blind spot. Yeah. Crack talks about how Philip Rivers is the guy that makes him lose more bets than anybody else. <laughs> yeah. Do you have anybody else that, that is your blind spot that you keep betting on and you're like, oh, why did I do it again? Yeah, for sure. When it comes to, I'm a, I know Crack doesn't like these bets, but I'm a big future bet guy. And so the Dodgers have been punishing <laughs> me since 1988. Uh, and the Cowboys have been punishing me since 90, whatever it was, uh, oh. for sure. Yeah, so. 95, probably. Yeah, thanks yeah. for that in, thanks. Cowboys, well, Cowboys are my team, so. Oh, nice, I, okay. Yeah, I kind of know too. that, but I never bet on them. Because as Crack says, don't be a homer. Don't let your, your emotions get to you, right? I Crack? know it, I know no, it. You're, I said it on many of these podcasts, your allegiance is your bankroll, not that team. <laughs> You know, I, I always use the line. This is one of my favorite movies. John, I'm sure you've seen it. Uh, Rosalie, I'm sure you've seen The Bronx Tale, too, I hope. And uh, No. No? Oh, do you now. have to see. You okay. have to see The Bronx Tale. We can't go on air again. Um, Seriously. Yeah. So <laughs> there's a line where the little kid comes in, and he's crying. And, you know, the wise guy says, why are you crying? He goes, oh, the Mick, the Mick. They took the Mick out of the game. And he's saying, that's what you're worried about, Mickey Mantle? He says, listen. See, your, see if your father can't pay the rent. Go ask Mickey Mantle. See if he'll pay it for you. Why He doesn't care about you. Why do you care about him? <laughs> that is my life now. Absolutely correct. Those guys don't care about you. I have no allegiance to any team, any player. I don't care. Once they leave the, the, the stadium, I could be betting on the next game, betting against them next game. doesn't yep. mean anything to me. So I hear you. I, I love that line from Bronx Tale. And, of course, John, like you – It you, says you, it you, all. Yeah, yeah, it says it all. I'm but a, getting I'm into – Hey, John, getting into uh, – we're, we're going to uh, close this episode here, and, and great to have you on, but we got to ask about you when you were younger with your pop. Oh. Any stories, maybe some guys that opened up for your dad, comedians yeah, or something. Give us some uh, – give us a couple a couple stories, all right? Yeah, it was crazy. So, Crack, I don't even know if you know this, but I did stand-up comedy for 10 years. I knew it. I heard about yeah, it. Yeah. Well, I used to – open. you know, it's impossible to grow up with a showbiz dad and not want to, you know – go down that highway. It's also impossible to grow up with a showbiz dad who works in Vegas a lot and not end up gambling. So <laughs> I did both. Uh, but yeah, I mean, growing up, you name the comedian and they opened for him. I mean, Jay Leno, David Letterman, Brad Garrett, uh, Steve Martin, you know, Rosie O'Donnell, uh, you know, you, you name them and they opened for him. Gary Shandling. I mean, so I grew up Small names. seeing all these. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, I grew up oh. seeing all these great comedians uh, <laughs> open for him. And, and you know, I, I've met so many celebrities and stuff. And it's weird. I've never really been a picture guy. Um, 
and I'm, I'm probably like you, like that crack. You probably have met so many famous people, and you, I bet you have no pictures with them. Now I start taking them because now, now, now well, yeah, I wish I had, wish one you one had one. photos from. Oh my god, it's yep. crazy. I mean, you know, De Niro and Dustin Hoffman and all these people that I've met. You know, Pacino. I got no proof or anything, oh, but man. one, the coolest story that that I think I have um, with my dad growing up was when I was about. I want to say five or six years old, we would go and have brunch on Sundays, not every week, but periodically at the uh, Beverly Hills Hotel at the Polo Lounge, which is like famous, you know, famous, you know, Hollywood hotspot back in the day. And I remember going there one time with my dad and we were, you know, they were taking us to our table and uh, there were two people at another table that kind of like stopped that my dad stopped and said hi to and started talking to. And, uh, you know, I remember even being little, being so aware of my surroundings that like I could tell that everyone was like looking at my dad and these people that we were talking to. Anyway, long story short, we end up sitting down with these people. And it was, I swear on my life, crack, Groucho Marx, Lucille Ball. What? Oh what? Oh, wow. Yeah, that's no. crazy, right. And that's and the funny thing is, I didn't like um, Groucho when I was little. I didn't like um, the Marx Brothers, like uh, that show. Like, uh, I didn't like his young. mustache. It, <laughs> it didn't work for me. But I loved I Love Lucy when I was little, and it, that I remember that being the moment when I remember being like a little kid. Like I didn't really understand like fame or anything, but I. I thought my dad, I remember that was the first time at like maybe five or six years old thinking to myself, my dad is so cool. He knows I love Lucy. Yeah. That was right. for me that's like, awesome. wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. What a great, that's a great story. Uh, yesterday we were texting back and forth too. One of my favorite guys I, I loved and I watched this special recently on Netflix and it was really so it saddened me was Robin Williams. Did you say you got to meet him or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, multiple times, but the first time, same kind of thing. So uh, this was maybe in 1984, I think. Um, I, I only remember because I, I can I remember stories based on what car my dad was driving at the time. So I remember he had like a champagne colored Corvette, like the 84 vet, the new first year, I think, of the new body right. style back then. And uh, we went to eat lunch. This was after my parents got divorced. And so my dad was living off of like Mulholland Drive. Um, and, uh, we went to this little, like, there was this little pizza place, um, called Santo Pietro's that we used to go to. And we were there. And when we left, um, Robin Williams was like out for a jog and he was jogging through the parking lot. So crazy. What you remember, you know, and he came, I remember he came up to my dad and I remember all I could think of was like, Oh my God, my dad knows Mork. Like, that's <laughs> yeah, right. Insane. Like, yeah. And he was, he was, did you nano nano him? I did. Right. I was. I was so. It's kind of funny. I was so painfully shy as a kid. Like yeah. when when teachers or even relatives found out that I was doing comedy back in the day, or even now hosting a podcast. There was like you. Like I was so <laughs> painfully shy. I never talked. You know, I grew up like in the Dodger locker room, basically. And my dad was real good friends with Tommy Lasorda, and we had dugout club seats back then. The ones like the old school dugout, like behind that that cage, you know, and like, the oh yeah. No wonder and, you keep betting on the Dodgers. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly and and you know we would go back in the in the locker room after the shows or after the after the games and uh all my favorite players like steve garvey was like god to me um painfully shy so afraid to even talk to them i would just stare and just soak it all up well oh, wow. we are really rob good. williams was was the goat man he he was great oh, met, met him a couple times very nice very nice man he was yeah. he was really nice thank you so much for being with us <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate yeah, thanks, John. This was this great. This was really great. I, yeah. I, I definitely got a, an adrenaline rush when you texted me yesterday, Crack, and you said, hey, you want to do the show? So, so thank you so much, and it's always Good. fun talking with you. Love great. it. And so now you've had the beauty on your show. Maybe you'll bring the beast on next time, right? <laughs> Come on. Where do you live? Phoenix. Okay. Phoenix. But I'm in Vegas a lot. So. Okay. Yeah, let, let me know next time. You, and come on out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Would love it. Love it. Don't know a lot about MMA, but I do That's know okay. a lot about the NFL. So we'll, 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 we'll talk, talk about Cowboys that. all day long. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So great. great job. Thank you so much Good. for being with us. You Thank know, you. Uh, we'll keep watching you. You keep watching us. Done. <laughs> Thanks, John. Appreciate it. Thank you.
Oh my gosh, what a great time. Love John Orlando. Big thanks to John for spending some time with us. We really appreciate it. Uh, Crack, these guests have been awesome to talk to and we've had some really, really good ones. For uh, everybody out there, if you missed them, you can check out our earlier episodes for interviews with the legendary PGA caddy, Casey Kerr. And then last week we had, uh, oh, sorry, the week before that, gosh, it's going by so fast. We had the Las Vegas Superbook, uh, Jay Cornegay with us. And then last week we had ESPN sports betting editor, David Behrman. They've been really, really good, right, Jay, uh, Crack? Yes, yes, we, we're, gonna have, we're gonna have some good, we're gonna have Casey on again for the next major too. So it's okay. great, he'll be at the major, uh, and, and, you know, majors, a big, big betting opportunity for people. They love betting the, the major golf tournaments. So that, that should be fun. Great. And then, um, on that note too, do you guys make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future guests? Cause we've got some really good ones lined up. So you're not going to want to miss that. All right. So let's move in to our picks and plays because I know everybody's out there waiting to see what crack is looking at. So crack. What's your big pick this week? And what, well, what do we have to come? You know, it's, it's, it's not that it's a big pick, but there's not a lot to bet on right now. There's not a lot of things I could give you. When football season starts, at least we'll have some stuff for the weekends that we could talk about. Um, but uh, I actually went to the UFC this week. This way we'll give everyone – it's tough to give out a golf play because uh, by the time our pod comes out, maybe it's a little bit too late. you got to rush to get the bet in. So I think we're going to give out a UFC play. Um, that my, my buddy Gamble Lou – on Twitter, he's a very sharp, um, uh, na- uh, very sharp UFC guy. Make it. Um, he he gave me something I liked he, this week, and and John Orlando, who likes to bet on uh, UFC, also agreed agreed with this. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna read this off my phone here. Uh, dog, they likes. I can't pronounce this guy's name that good. <laughs> El- Eli Eliu Zaliski Dos Zaliski. Santos. It's a lot of names. <laughs> so uh, plus about a dollar ten around around town everywhere. And uh, I feel he's seen better opposition, and this should be a great fight. So um, I think that's a good, uh, a good one. I'm going. I'm actually going to bet it myself for a decent amount of money because I like betting these little tiny dogs like that yeah. that can get the job done uh, in the UFC. And, and I'm actually going to throw some money on that myself. So the so way you're going to go, you're going to bet this one yourself, and you're going to go out. I always bet everything I say. Anyway, let, let me just further say I yeah. always, if I give something out, yeah. my own money's on it. And by the way. Unlike most people that give stuff out, um, that that especially if they sell games or or they have a service subscription service, I, I, I bet all my stuff that I give out. I, right. I don't just talk about it and 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 tell you to bet it. And I hope it wins for you and not me. Yeah. I, I bet it, and and something like this, I have no problem betting ten thousand on. Well, that's why people love you. I mean, same thing in fantasy football too. I don't, I don't tell you to draft people that I wouldn't personally draft myself, right? Or I don't tell you to start people that I'm not starting or wouldn't start myself. Yep. So yep. it's the same kind of thing. So, well, good. So UFC, that's a great pick. And you, you had, we had John on earlier who we know loves it. Um, okay. So anything else on your radar this week? I know we're still. <clears throat> I'm, I'm betting some golf. In my throat. No problem. I'm betting some golf, but, um, you know, I'm betting some golf stuff, but it's just not, uh, it's matchups. And I, I, I I don't know if we can, some, some stuff I'll put up on my Twitter. If I feel something's prevalent or again, you can go to crack wins for you. You get all my plays. I have about five golf matchups. Uh, if you go to crackwins.com. So, uh, we, we do, we, or, or the crack wins app, we do have, uh, I think we have five golf matchups. We, we were sending out. So, I do have that stuff there, um, okay. but, but again, for our free pick for, for our viewers and for WSN.com and the WSN.com, uh, the, our, our viewers here for our podcast, we're going to stick with that UFC pick. Okay, so quick question before we move on to our Twitter questions, because we, we, we were talking about live betting today. Now, does any of that go into like UFC during the match is live betting a good idea during golf tournaments is live betting a good idea. Yes, there is live betting during UFC. It's something that just started really in the past year or two. And uh, it's a fun way to bet also. Maybe you didn't get down on time on your fighter, or maybe you see something in the fight that maybe someone else doesn't, or that's just like an NFL game too, though. If you, 
if you you know see something, maybe an injury or something, maybe you want to get off your bed a little bit to hedge a little bit because mm-hmm. of an injury, you could do that. So it's the same thing with the UFC. They do have it. Golf, yes. Uh, I noticed this past week at the, the Westgate and stuff, they had live odds on the golf. Mm. Um, pretty interesting. So you could bet two win odds. Again, the future book, uh, that the future book, when, you bet, when you're betting live odds, sometimes you're betting like plus two to one, plus five to one, plus eight to one. Uh, there's a lot of juice in that. So you want to be careful betting, betting that more, more than uh, betting a straight up, like a UFC match, fighter versus fighter live, was just like, just like at the start of a fight. So the odds, so it's a little better. Got it. So great, great tips there from Crack. All right, let's go to some of our Twitter questions. I love this segment. You guys are really loving it too. I love all the questions coming in. Like I said, we, we're not going to be able to get to all of them, but please keep sending them in because we're trying to get as much in as we can for you guys. And Crack has said that he will, uh, if we don't get to him, he'll, he'll try to answer him on Twitter as well. So uh, we've got some really good ones this week. And so let's start with the first one. It's from Edwin Lord. And he's talking about futures stuff, which, uh, you know, he's, he's in my wheelhouse too. He's talking about NFL. So he says, best picks for the first week of the NFL seasons. Uh, season, Bears at one and a, with one and a half or Texans receiving 10 and a half. Just ask. Okay. Uh, I ha- we haven't really looked at the first week per se uh, at most of the games, but you've hit on one of the games that I talked about earlier on one of our WSN podcasts, the 10 and a half. Uh, that's the Chiefs-Texans games. I think yeah. that's the first game of the season, prime time. It might even be a Thursday night game. I think that's the first game, like I said. So uh, I look for the public to be all over the favorite there and, and the over. Um, I really – I may throw a, a bet on – uh, a correlated parlay there, which is another whole segment in itself of maybe uh, n- normally there's not correlated parlays, by the way, in, in NFL. Normally it's, a, it's, it's more college football. But mm. uh, I kind of like dog and under there. I yeah. more like the under, though. So uh, if anything, the under on the game, which was around 56. Uh, and You I like kinda... the under on KC Texans, huh? Yes. Oh, it's, 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 it's like I said on an earlier podcast. There's, it, there's no game in the first week or two that should be lined at 56 total points, So, in my opinion. So Woo! we'll see what happens. I don't know, man. Yeah. Talking about juice, uh, our man Mahomes just got a lot of juice. So yeah. that, might be, uh, that might be encouraging him to throw. Also, it also could be a lot of pressure on him, too. Um, true, true. We, we've seen in the Super Bowl, uh, you know, it, it, that, that didn't come out until the second half. So we'll, yeah. let's see what happens. All right. Good, good. Uh, so he likes the Texans with the points and he likes the under there. So, all right, let's go to Jim's question. He says, Hey, love the show. We love you too, Jim. Thanks for watching. My question for Bill, what are some of the pros and cons? It's interesting. He asked about this because we talked a little bit about it. Pros and cons of Euro books versus American books. Well, yes. Good question, Jim. Thanks for asking. Uh, the Euro books, you have to be careful a lot of them are, are, are the juice is much worse uh, mm-hmm. what they charge, especially on baseball. I don't like what I see, actually. I looked at a lot of the books have their lineup for the first game. I do not like what I see. They're, 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 uh, the first baseball game, like minus 135, come back 115. What that means is you're laying a dollar 35 to win 100, but on the dog, you're taking back $115 for every 100 you put up, where actually the right juice is. The, you know, the old baseball dime line, um, which I'm used to. I, I had 25 different sports books that had this line for, forever until these European uh, sports books started booking, uh, which that means that 135, if you're laying a dollar 35, you're taking back a dollar 25. Mm. It may not sound like anything significant, but trust me, over the season, over the course of a week, a month, a season, it equals so much money that you're playing into this wider margin. I would stick to the, the, the places. You know, I said some earlier things about William Hill, how bad they were yeah. about some certain things. I stick up for them here. They, they might be the only true 10 cent line, the only dime line in New Jersey. So um, they, at least they do have that dime line. Uh, I have so to give them the credit. When you say dime line, is that, that means that the, between the, the, the two sides of it, right? That's a, so that, that's a, yeah, 10, it's, a term, it's a term used for the, 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 the juice or, or the, the, the money that sportsbook gets, the vigorish. Like, in other words, it's minus one. It, let's say a game is pick them. 
let's say yeah. the you know Yankees are playing the Red Sox, and both teams are about equal, and the sports books will have minus 105 on both sides. So if yeah. you want one about the Yankees, you're laying 105 dollars to win 100, or mm -hmm. if you want to bet the Red Sox, you're betting 100, and you're laying 105 dollars to win 100. Whereas the NFL, everything is minus 110. So baseball, because it's every day and it's a daily grind, and there's so much uh, volume involved. Uh, they, they, most sports books, good sports books will have a, a 105 minus 105 starting point. Okay. Gotcha. All right, here we go. Uh, last question for this week comes from Truth Johnson. Love her name. Fantastic. What is sport or sports? What sport or sports have been the most successful for Bill over the past few years? Usually college sports. Uh, the collegiate sports are normally good. College basketball, college football. Uh, however, these last couple of years have been a little bit different. I had ridiculous runs on NBA totals, especially this last year, you know, hitting over 62% on NBA totals. Wow. It, really, I, I've been doing really well there. Golf matchups. Um, golf matchups have been unbelievable the last couple of years. So uh, they, they've probably been more successful than the college sports. I mean, a couple of years ago in, the, in college sports, basketball any of my guys that were with me on crack wins they know this i ran on godly i think i honestly think we won 40 more games than we lost just in one month i mean we were really wow. flying high i won about 60 units for the for the season after juice but we were on a we were on a, a tear that was unbelievable but however that change that changes and you have to change with the markets and yeah. you have to evolve so um anything can happen we have a brand new thing happening here with uh, these sports starting up again, um, you know, the, the, in the middle of a season where they normally don't even play NBA. So we'll see what happens. So, yeah, so piggybacking on that just a little bit with all the sports coming in at the same time, where do you see you yourself placing most of your wagers? I'm going to dive right in with the NBA totals again. They were so okay. good up until a couple months ago went before the pandemic hit and everything shut down. Uh, and we'll, so we'll also do that. baseball. We've had some baseball runs that have been great too. So, We'll also do baseball, NBA. I'm psyched up. I'm ready to work. I'm ready to, I'm ready to get out of, you know, looking at the four walls that I've been looking at for four <laughs> months now. Okay. Wow. Some great questions from you guys this week. Keep sending them in because we love answering them. I love hearing from you guys. And that's it for this episode of Wisecracks. I want to thank you guys for joining. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to WSN on YouTube. And join us next week for another sports betting strategy deep dive. We've covered some great topics, but there's lots, lots more for you guys to hear about. We'll have another great special guest and more picks and plays, of course, from the crack man. Thank crack, you. Great job. Thank you, Rosalie. Great job. And, and they can find us on Twitter. I'm mm -hmm. at Bill Crackman with a K. And yep. Rosalie, your, your handle? At Rosalie Michaels. And, of course, don't forget at WSN sports as well so yeah, yeah we'll see Thanks. you guys next week take care